graciously invited, so call me back. Okay, I love you. What's up, you guys, and welcome back to Emotionally Online, the weekly slumber party for spilling guts and sharing secrets, hosted by yours truly, the one and only Maddie Drosbeck, inventor of sleepovers herself. She has risen. Everybody applaud. Hello. How are we doing? How are we feeling? It is Thursday morning when I'm recording this. Um... And I just got back from visiting my sister in Los Angeles um, because she just graduated college. We were celebrating her college graduation, Cal State Long Beach. Um, Go Beach! (laughs) And I just got back last night. Miss Mango is getting in all of her cuddle hours because she has been missing me over the last four days that I've been gone, which might not seem like a lot, but it is to her because... She the quarantine kitty. Yeah, she did. She the quarantine kitty. <laughs> so she's she's known very limited days of her life without me. Friggin' love this cat, dude. Couldn't love anything more than I love her. Um, okay, how are we doing? How are we feeling? We've got so much to talk about today. Um, for starters, before I get into it, I don't know if you guys noticed, if you're only listening on YouTube. If you're listening on Apple Podcasts, you probably have no idea about this. But if you're a Spotify listener, Spotify added this like Q&A and poll feature under each episode. So I can add uh, little questions for you guys to answer, like a prompt that you can answer in directly in Spotify in the in the episode. And there's also a poll option. So for last week's episode, I added a poll and a question the poll that I added was, would you have sex in your friend's bed? And then the question I added on top of that was, why or why not? If you wouldn't have sex in your friend's bed, would you care if they had sex in yours? So I wanted to share out the results of this poll. And if you want to see um, some of the answers that people left as for why or why not, you can go check that out in Spotify. Um, people were also talking about it in the YouTube comments as well. But Now you've got two places to hear what the people are saying. But this poll that has 446 votes on it. So little under 500 people voted in this poll and the results are in. Would you have sex in your friend's bed? The people are almost a complete 50-50 split. I, I had three options here. You could either vote absolutely, why not? Yes, but I would ask or absolutely not. So there's two yes options and one no option. It's like, yes, but I do have some, some standards here for what I will or won't do. I have to say something first or someone that's just like, yeah, for sure. Who cares? I'm in the middle of both of those. Depends on the person. I've never had sex in someone else's bed. But I for sure would. I don't see anything wrong with it. I wouldn't care if my friends had sex in my bed and they don't need to ask me before doing it. They can if they want to, but I wouldn't care either way. So I'm somewhere in between absolutely why not and yes, but I would ask because it would depend on the person and the circumstance. But if it was role reversed and it was my bed and my friends having sex in my bed, I wouldn't care either way. 23% of people voted absolutely why not. 33% of people voted yes, but I would ask. And 43% voted absolutely not. So a little bit more is cool with it than not cool with it. But still, this is like 50-50. 50% of people are totally fine with having sex in a friend's bed. um, And 50% of people are totally not fine with it. And in the comments, uh, people were recounting stories on how they have a friend or they know someone whose entire friendship ended because they had sex in a friend's bed. So this is a very polarizing, controversial topic. So... I think before you're going to have sex in someone's bed, I would dive into whether or not your friend is the type of friend that will be cool with that because allegedly this is friendship ending stuff. We've got our second sponsor on the pod, our friends over at Blessa. Of course, we're here repping my absolute favorite place, my one-stop shop for anything and everything female sexuality. Blessa is where I buy all of my favorite vibrators that big vibrator drawer that I have in my in my bedroom those two drawers next to my bed packed with different vibrators yeah 
almost all of them are from Balesa. Sorry, my cat's attacking me right now. <laughs> Miss Mango, I know you want to play, but mommy's doing the podcast. So we need to wait. One of my new favorite vibrators from Balesa is the thrust vibrator. I've only ever owned two thrusting vibrators in my life. And the thrust I came, I came into possession of a few months ago and it is a dessert vibrator is how I describe it. There are some nights where I want to spend 45 minutes to an hour masturbating. I want to make it luxurious. I want to pick out the perfect video and I want to indulge in what I'd call a dessert vibrator. It is a lot. It is not for your quick nights. It is for the nights where you want a little bit of everything, a little luxury, a little dessert in my head, a step down from the dessert vibrator would be something like the Air Vibe, which is another Balesa vibrator that I love. It's a dual stimulation vibrator. So you've got one side for G-spot stimulation and then another for clit stimulation. So you've got a little bit of both, best of both worlds going on. It's not quite a dessert vibrator, I would say. This could be your everyday vibrator, but dual stimulation, we can get a little crazy if we want to get a little crazy. But I will say the Balesa vibrator that I use the absolute most, my everyday vibrator, the one that I'm always keeping charged that is always on me, locked and loaded, is the Aurora vibrator. Either the regular Aurora or the soft touch Aurora. It's a very standard beginner plain Jane vibrator, but she's perfect. She is just what I need. I get in there, I do what I need to do, and I, I go to bed and I feel great afterwards. <laughs> So anyways, point being, there are so many delicious, luxurious vibrators to choose from with Balesa. And what better time to treat yourself to a new vibe than at the beginning of Hot Girl Summer, baby. And of course, every sponsorship I do with Balesa is also a giveaway where every single person wins something. So all you've got to do is go down to the link in the description of this episode, input your email address, and check your inbox to see what you've won. You're either going to get a free vibrator or a gift card towards your next purchase at Balesa. So again, all you've got to do is input your email address at the link in the description of this episode, check your inbox in a few minutes to see what you've won. So like I mentioned earlier, I just got back from LA. I was... There for the last few days, a little mini trip because my younger sister was graduating from college, Cal State Long Beach. Um, So we were there watching Morgan graduate and um, it's just brought back so many memories of that time for me. I'm four years older than Morgan, so it's been four years since I've graduated college and Um, a whole other bachelor's degree could have been achieved in the time that I have not been in school. And I think watching someone you love graduate just brings back all of the memories of what you felt at that time in life. And yeah, I've just been thinking a lot about it. For starters, congratulations to anybody that's graduating this spring, high school or college. Congrats to you. You did it. Um, You're here. You're moving on to the next chapter. And I think when I graduated from high school, I was just excited. There was no mixture of emotions there. I was only excited to graduate high school. I remember watching people cry when we were graduating high school, being like, what the fuck are you guys crying about? (laughs) We had different experiences at this school. <laughs> like, I was just like so excited to not have to show up and hang out around those people every single day. I really didn't like my high school. I've mentioned it before. I've told stories. You guys know why I don't. I didn't like high school. I was badly bullied. I didn't really feel like I fit in. Um, just wasn't wasn't my place. Wasn't my people. Despite it not being my place and not being my people, I did meet a lot of my best friends in high school. So it's like, despite the town overall, maybe not being great, there were some great people there and I was lucky enough to find them. Um, so, I mean, to this day, some of my closest, closest best friends are people that I went to high school with. And, um, 
But I will say, like, at the time, I don't remember really feeling sad about leaving my friends, not because I don't love them. I love them literally more than anyone on the face of the planet, okay? Being a bestie is literally my number one trait. (laughs) But I think that by the end of high school, I already felt so secure in those friendships that I wasn't sad to leave because I just had no doubt in my mind that things were going to stay the same. Like I, I knew that those friendships were forever. So it wasn't a matter of like, Oh, I'm going to cry cause we're leaving each other because I'm like, yeah, but we're also going to FaceTime like every other fucking day. We're going to be in constant text communications and I'll see you in a few months and we'll catch up and you'll come visit me and I'll come visit you. Like I just, I just didn't, I wasn't that concerned about it. And maybe that's also because I had long distance friendships in high school. So I already felt like I was capable of maintaining long distance friendships. Um, Destiny, for those of you guys that maybe know her, maybe are familiar with uh, her through my content. Um, Destiny is one of my best friends. We met when we were in the eighth grade on YouTube And we became like the best of friends. She lived in New York City. I lived suburbs of Massachusetts and we FaceTimed, Skyped every single night growing up. She was, I mean, like we, we did everything together. We talked every single fucking day and we lived nowhere near each other. And, um, obviously destiny is still in my life. She lives in New York. I live in New York now. So our friendship, it's weird that like we used to be internet friends and YouTube friends because now it's been eight years of being in person friends. So it's just, yeah, it's funny. Sometimes I like forget that that's even how we met. But anyways, at the time I had been really close friends with destiny for four or five years at that point, I had already done a long distance friendship before. So I wasn't that concerned about it. And also, like I said, I did feel very secure in my friendships. Um, so I wasn't really that worried. So I don't know that I felt sad about leaving my friends cause it didn't feel like it was going to change anything to me. Um, I was just pure, pure excitement to move to New York. I, it was New York or bust for me. I only applied to two colleges, Pace University and Marymount Manhattan got into both and ended up choosing Marymount and moved here 2015, August, 2015 and have not left since. But high school graduation was just like pure fun, pure excitement. We're out of here. Fuck you guys. (laughs) See you never losers. (laughs) But college graduation I remember feeling a lot more sad about and it wasn't even necessarily sadness of like it's over and this was the best four years of my life and I'm I'm gonna look back on this forever and miss it like I don't I wouldn't personally characterize college like that like everyone's always like college is the best four years of your life don't get me wrong I loved college but I don't know that I would describe college as being the best four years of my life that I will always look back on and be like longing for that period of time over and over again. I liked college. I had fun in college. College was great. By the end of college though, I think I just, I felt more scared than anything else. And maybe part of it is fueled by the fact that I didn't feel as secure post-college as I did post high school. Like I think going out of high school, I was just like, I feel secure in my friendships, feel secure with my family. I'm excited to go to New York. I feel so confident in myself. Like I'm going to go out there, do great things and just like be in the city, being hot and sexy and gorgeous and doing whatever the fuck else I was going to do. I don't know. I was still very, I was baby, right? I was 18 years old. I hadn't even had my first kiss when I graduated high school. She was just excited to be out in the world and away from her hometown that she associated with everything bad that had ever happened. You know, like my, it was all there and I could leave and go to New York and it would all be different. And in a lot of ways it was, but I think by the end of college, I, I don't know. The transition from college to post-grad was harder for me. And I remember the day of my college graduation I, I mean, I hated it. I, that whole weekend I cried so much. My college graduation was miserable. I don't even really feel like I got to celebrate in any way. Cause I just felt so sad. 
Um, I remember feeling like nobody cared that I was graduating because it was an arts degree. I don't know if that's true or not, or if it was just like, there was a lot of other things going on in my life at the time that I, I was, that was the story I was telling myself. I don't know if people genuinely didn't care or not. I'm, I'm not going to jump to make those assumptions now. This was four years ago. I'm sure people did care. I felt like they didn't at the time. But I remember the day of my graduation sitting in my bedroom by myself doing my makeup and my roommate at the time, her entire family came over, like brought Prosecco and orange juice and pastries and they were all like celebrating in the living room and I was sitting by myself in my bedroom just listening and feeling like so sad like just feeling like nobody cared that I was graduating or whatever it's nobody's fault right like my my family's never really been the type to plan extravagant things I'm the one that does that so like even when we go on family vacations I'm the one that books all of like the activities or I'm the one that's like, should we do this? Should we do that? Should we book this? Should we, whatever. I'm the planner. Not everyone's a planner. I get that. But I remember that weekend just feeling so sad that like I was the one that had to book my graduation dinner and plan the weekend out and nobody surprised me with anything or like seemed to go out of their way to celebrate the weekend and I'm not trying to make anyone feel bad though because it really isn't a big deal and I think my sadness more had to do with um, like fear of the unknown moving into post-grad not knowing what life was going to look like. I was in a creative block at the time. I wasn't making YouTube videos. I had a job lined up post-grad but I wanted to do YouTube and I had no idea how I was going to do it and I didn't really feel like I had a lot of close close friends in New York at the time so I think my sadness was probably more fueled by that but I was set off by the fact that it was graduation weekend and I felt like nobody cared and like the close people that I did have in my life my family that was there celebrating me didn't really plan anything to make the weekend special I had to make the make the weekend special for myself like I can't tell you how many birthdays that I have sat and cried because I've just felt like sometimes it it just gets a tiring being the person that's always planning and making things special for other people. And then you're always the one that has to do it for yourself too. Cause I get it. It's like a type of person where we're the people that are like the planners and the organizers and the people that want to do like the tiny gifts and tiny special moments and whatever. Like some people just don't think about it in that way, but when you are someone that does think about it in that way, sometimes it feels amplified when nobody does it back to you because you're like, I didn't want to have to do this for myself. You know, I wanted somebody else to care and think that this weekend was important and plan something for me or do something. I don't know something, you know? And, um, yeah, I think it just set me off. It was like the cherry on top of everything else, which was really the problem. Um, Because obviously, like my family showed up to my graduation. They were here. They were celebrating me. They were excited for me. They were happy for me. Um, It was not that my family didn't care, right? It was, I was perceiving it that way because there was all these other things going on and having to plan my own graduation weekend was just like the cherry on top. You know, it was just one of those moments. And... I cried all weekend during and after graduation. I cried at my graduation dinner publicly on a rooftop of some Mexican restaurant in Midtown. Um, yeah, I just had like the worst graduation weekend ever. And I, I, it was majority fueled by the fact that like there was so much unknown at the time. I did have a job lined up after graduation, which was great. But um, it was one of those things where it's like, I don't, I knew I didn't want to do that forever, you know, like some people are, they get a job post-grad and they're like focused on how they can climb the ladder and they, that they like get a job in their field and they're just going to work their way up. And for me, I was kind of like, okay, well, I'm going to work in video editing and social media and that's sort of what I want to do, but I don't want to work for brands and I don't want to do advertising and 
I just want to work for myself and make YouTube videos and be creative and get to do exactly what I'm doing now. So it worked out. (laughs) It worked out people. But at the time I was like, okay, I'm accepting this job because I need a job. And it's sort of within the field that I want to do the like general field, but it's, I don't know what's going to happen from here. I was in like a super creative rut at the time. I wasn't making YouTube videos and I felt like I just didn't have my community in New York at the time was lacking. Um, I, you know, friendships come and go throughout college and post-grad. Some people move away, some people stay. And I think by the end of college, I was like, okay, I've got a few people. But some of these people, I don't think that these friendships are going to last post-grad. I don't know that we have much in common if we're not studying together anymore. Um, Like, I remember after graduation when we were standing outside Lincoln Center taking photos, just feeling like, this is so fake. Like, why are we all taking photos with each other? We're never going to speak to each other again. And just feeling like, okay, okay. I just don't, I don't know, I don't know that I feel like you guys are my community. (laughs) I don't know that I feel like I have a community. And, you know, I, I, some of my high school friends live in New York, so I knew I had them, and I had a few friendships from college that I felt secure in, but they weren't friends with each other. And so I had, like, a a lot of one-off friendships, which has been most of my life. I've had a lot of one-off friendships. But I just felt like alone and I, I, I wasn't, I wasn't in like a happy graduation mood. So my graduation weekend from college was sad and I spent most of that summer feeling sad and feeling like I was trying to find my footing and find my people to build out what my life in New York could look like as an adult without having you know classmates to rely on and it is scary going into that but what I do want to say is that for everyone that is worried that post-grad is going to be like the hardest thing ever to like meet and find community and that like college is the best four years of your life and it just all goes downhill from here I'm here to tell you that looking back on the past four years of my life, I actually think the last two have been the best. Um, and yes, that is partially in, 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 in the fact that I have achieved a like lifelong goal of mine and I am, you know, living the fucking dream. Yes, that contributes to why the last two years have been a great time for me. But I also just think that the older that I've gotten, the more secure I've gotten within myself, within my brain. I've been in therapy for almost two years um, or a year and a half. (laughs) Let's not over congratulate ourselves. But, um, you know, I've, I've been mentally feeling so much better, more secure in myself. Dating has gotten better because I'm more secure in myself. My friendships have gotten better. I have made so many friends post-grad now if you line up all of the people in my life um it's probably an even split between people that I've known for a long long time and people that are newer friends post-grad to me hasn't I actually feel like I've made more friends since leaving college than I did while I was in college like even looking at my trivia team there's seven of us me, August, who is one of my best friends from high school. Then we have Jordan, uh, Jordan, Jordan Skinner, who has been on the pod. Well, both Jordans have been on the pod, but Jordan has been on the pod multiple times. That Jordan, we met on the internet when we were kids. So we, I have known Jordan since I was in high school, but we didn't go to high school together. We were internet friends and then we became real life friends in like college time was when I met Jordan in person for the first time. Um, 
And then Haley, who I met this year because Jordan brought Haley to trivia and introduced her to us. Jordan L. Jordan Larson, who's also been on the podcast. Um, I met Jordan because she came to a, a an event that I was working and introduced herself because um, she watched the vids and we have became such close friends. And then Kendall, who I went to high school with Kendall, but we weren't friends in high school. And then we sort of became like internet friends over the course of the pandemic. And then Kendall moved to New York and I invited her to come to trivia with us. And then Story, who I met on TikTok last year. So I'm just saying, like, you, you can meet people in a bunch of weird ways. <laughs> Sometimes it's, like, people that you know online from a long time ago or people that you sort of knew, you went to high school with, and then you become actual friends in adulthood. People you meet on TikTok, friends of friends, people that you meet on the internet in other ways. Like, it's there's so many different ways to meet people as an adult that I think, like, a lot of people think that it's so much harder to meet people once you're not in school. And I just don't... I don't think it has to be that way. I think that it can feel that way and it can feel overwhelming. But if there's anything I've learned as an adult, it's that everybody wants more friends. Everyone is looking for new friends. And like, if you have the guts to just befriend someone on social media and then be like, Hey, we should do this. Hey, we should get coffee. Hey, we should make plans. Like people will say yes. And I just, I, I want anyone listening that's scared of post-grad to have like a moment of relief here where it's like post-grad I think the years that follow the next four years where you're sort of finding your footing in your adult life once you feel like you found that footing you found that security I promise you it's going to be better than anything you've experienced in life so far I just think that there's there's no replacement for how awesome it feels to be in a more emotionally secure position with people around you that love you and believe in you and want the best for you. And that doesn't mean that you have everything figured out. I by no means have everything figured out, but I feel very trusting in myself to figure it out, to build community for myself, to, you know, build the life that I want to live as an adult in a way that I don't, I don't think I could have even come close to having this type of security when I was in college. It's something that just comes with age. And, um, I just want to say you have that to look forward to and that life gets better after, after school, after college, after high school. I think it all just gets slowly better and better and better. And I think it's going to keep getting better. And that's what I think. I think that life when you're younger is significantly harder. You're experiencing everything for the first fucking time. Emotionally, that is so impossible to deal with. Once you go through life a little bit more, you get used to things, you develop better coping mechanisms, you go to therapy, you heal, you work on your emotional health. Life just gets easier and easier. It gets more fun. It gets better. And so... Anyone that's telling you that the best years of your life are, you know, over by the time you hit 22 is lying to you. And that's all I'll say. And this is coming from someone who's 26. I don't even know that much yet. (laughs) Fucking go talk to some 30, 40, 50 year olds and they'll tell you exactly what I'm telling you. Unless maybe some of them peaked in college, in which case don't listen to them. (laughs) Any who's, any who's and any what's. Man goes back to Kadu. But anyways, that's been on my mind, on my noggin ever since watching my sister graduate. Because I think at the time, people probably looked at my life or looked at my posts on social media post-college or around my graduating year thinking that, like, I had everything. She had the friends and the lifestyle and she was living in New York when that was not true at all. And yeah, I just think that the the community I've built here now, the life I have in New York now is so much more secure than it was when I was in college. So it's not always what you think it is looking at it on social media. Um, And also post-grad is great. Adult life is great. You're going to have a great time. Congratulations. You will figure it out. You did it. You got through it. It only keeps getting better from here on out. 
Um, additionally, a random thought, a disconnected, completely disconnected from everything I've been speaking about so far. But when I was in the airport, I, I've been in the airport quite a lot recently because I've been traveling a lot. Every time I'm there, I see about 50 different Dior tote bags and no fucking offense to anyone who owns that bag, but that is the ugliest fucking bag I've ever seen in my life. Uh, ever seen in my life. It's so ugly and fucking everyone has it. Everyone is rolling around their carry-on suitcases with this ugly fucking tote bag on top of it. I'm going to look up how much that tote bag costs because I just feel like it's going to cost way more than it should for something that fucking ugly. Dior tote bag cost. You definitely know that I what I'm talking about. I'm so mad. I'm so mad. I'm so fucking mad right now. It's, oh my fucking God. They range from like $3,200 to $3,800, which is so ridiculous for a bag that's that fucking ugly, okay? For a while, I couldn't understand why someone would spend that much money on a bag, period, which that's a lot of money. I still don't know that I fully understand it but I'm starting to get it. Okay. I'm starting now at the age of 26 to understand the appeal of designer purchases because you can tell when something's designer. I used to not be able to tell. I didn't have an eye for it. My taste levels were not as high as they are now, (laughs) but I, now I can like see the quality difference of like a dupe and a designer bag. I get it. Would I personally spend $3,000 on a designer bag, let alone a fucking tote? No, I wouldn't. Would I consider spending 1200 to 1500 on a bag? I would consider it. I don't think I would at this stage of my life, but maybe in a few years or maybe a year. I don't know how long away I am from doing this. I don't own any designer bags. And for a while I was like, what's the point in buying designer bags? Like one, it's just a fucking bag. Two, like, can't you just buy a knockoff? I didn't see, I didn't get the difference. Now I sort of get it. I still think that a lot of it is way too much fucking money for no fucking reason, but I sort of get it. I sort of get it now. What I still don't get is shoes. Shoes, I don't think I'll ever care about. I do not give a fuck about shoes. I just don't care. They're going to get roughed up anyways. Why are you going to spend so much money on them? Don't get it. Don't want to get it. Never going to get it. But a fucking ugly, ugly, I can't emphasize enough, ugly, ugly Christian Dior tote bag. There's no way that's fucking worth that. I can't. I can't. If you're going to spend that much money on a bag, it's got to be fucking gorgeous. Okay? It's got to be gobsmacking vibes. It's got to be incredible. Like three. uh, I can't. That is so ugly. It's so ugly. If it was not ugly, I don't know that I'd be as offended. I would still be like, that's so much money for a bag. But that tote bag specifically, it's haunting me. I'm seeing it everywhere and it's so ugly. No fucking offense to anyone that has it, but it is. It's ugly. I don't know why people like it. Look it up. Just look up Dior tote bag and look at the images. That's what I'm talking about. And it's ugly. What movie is that from? Because you are ugly. Is it She's the Man? I know it's Amanda Bynes that says that line. I don't know what movie it is. (laughs) Ugly. Speaking of ugly. (laughs) Hinge. I'm done with this app. I actually deleted it again we're done. We're over it. I deleted hinge is always, it's the only dating app that I'm ever on. Cause I just hate other dating apps, but I did officially delete my hinge account. It's done. It's gone. Not just the app, my account it's been deleted. My profile is gone because I'm over it. <laughs> I just don't think I care anymore. I haven't really been swiping over the last few months. So it's like I, the app's been on my phone, but I haven't been using it. I haven't gone on a single hinge date all year. So it's like I was already pretty much over it. But now I'm just intensely over it. So I deleted it. I'm having a dating app free summer. We're going to date in other ways. Um, but maybe it's a dating app free life from now on. I can't express to you how done I am with these apps. I was 
just I, I don't know what the final straw was for me with Hinge. I think it's just because they're they're bullshitters and liars. <laughs> Hinge. Got a question for you, babe. Quick little question to the people over at Hinge. Why is it you guys have this most compatible feature if you're not on Hinge? God bless you. <laughs> on Hinge, they do a thing where it's like most compatible where when you open the app every day, they serve you, the first profile they serve you is your most compatible. And it's someone whose profile and interests and whatever is supposed to be like a good match with you. What are you doing? What are you doing with that service, babes? Because I'm telling you, you have never once served me someone that is actually most compatible with me. And I'm not even saying that based off of like just reading the profile and they have entirely different interests than me. Fine, whatever. I don't know what the capabilities of this algorithm are, but if you're telling me that on Hinge, they give you options to select for like what what kind of relationship you're looking for. I fill that part out. I select long-term relationship. It's filled out. It's on my profile in a box that you made me select. And you're going to tell me that my most compatible match is someone that says that they're looking for a hookup. Just, just, just on the baseline alone of what we're looking for, we are not compatible. So how are you serving me someone like that as my most compatible? If you want to serve me my most compatible, you should be serving someone who's looking for the same thing that I'm looking for as a baseline right? We're not even getting to like, you know, what, what field do we work in? How far away are we based from each other? How old are we? Whatever. All those other things that weigh into compatibility. We're just, just basing it off of what we're looking for. I don't know how Hinge bases their compatibility off of if it's just like similar profiles that swipe on me, swipe on them, or I swipe on similar profiles to them and I don't know. I don't know how they do it. I just know that it's not fucking working, whatever it is, because how are you going to serve me my most compatible? And it's someone who's like, I'm trying to fuck. Hello. Hello. And goodbye. What the fuck? The amount of times that hinge most compatible has offended me. I just, I'm done. I'm done. I'm done. This algorithm has no fucking idea what it's doing. That's my conclusion here is that we're going on these dating apps and we're trusting the algorithms to like do what they need to do, but they're not, they're not doing what they need to do. And I, I just don't believe it's working anymore. And you know, I gave it a good old fashioned try. I've been on dating apps for eight years, eight years. Okay. I've been on dating apps since I moved to New York, took a year off in between two years ago or a year ago, a year and a half ago. Oh my God. When was my year of no dating? Why can I not remember? (laughs) It wasn't last year. Was it last year? No, it wasn't. It wasn't. It wasn't one. It was a year and a half ago. Oh my God. <laughs> so, okay. We'll call it seven years, eight years. I took a year off. So seven, seven years. I've been on dating apps pretty regularly. And I just, I'm convinced that you people do not know what you're doing. <laughs> you don't know what you're doing. I can do this job better myself. So anyways, I'm over it. We're not doing dating apps anymore. We're going to speed dating events. We're doing matchmakers. We're, um, walking up to people at trivia. Uh, we're hitting on people on Instagram. We're telling our friends to set us up with people they might know period. That's all we're doing. (laughs) We are not swiping on hinge. I can't do it anymore. And you know what? Me and my vibrators have had a very close relationship recently feel like I'm in high school again (laughs) I don't know why in my horny era (laughs) I don't know I feel like I'm always my sex drive is always like pretty high but lately it's been every damn day babes (laughs) when I was in LA I was like god damn it I didn't bring anything with me. I did have my own room, so I could have, but it's fine. It's a four day fucking family trip. I can relax. <laughs> but I, when I got back last night, ooh wee. <laughs> I 
I don't know. I don't know what's going on. I just think I don't. It's been a while, guys. I'll be honest. I'll be very, very brutally honest. It's been a long time. <laughs> it's been a long time. I mean, there's been like brief encounters. I had like a brief sexual encounter like a month and a half ago, probably. Wasn't sex. I haven't had sex in a long time. Long. When? When do you think? Let's do some thinking. A year ago? Over a year ago? I've like had, I've made out with people. I've gotten like hot and heavy with people. Some people have sucked my nipples. (laughs) But I think that like nipple sucking is maybe the like farthest I have gone in recent memory. Right? Maybe I've sucked a dick. I've probably sucked a dick. Maybe. I don't know. I don't think so, though. I haven't had I can tell you with confidence that I haven't had penetrative sex in over a year. I know that that I know I've had other like sexual encounters with people where maybe there was oral that happened. Maybe there was an oral exchange. (laughs) I don't remember. This is why I need to I used to have a notes app where I would write all of it down. And then I was like, why are you doing this? I was like, nobody, you don't need to write that down. You just feel like you have to. I was like, for a while, I like knew what my body count was. I only deleted that like a year ago. So I'm pretty sure I could do some calculations. (laughs) But I had a notes app in college because I was like, I don't know. I just want to remember. I wanted to remember people's names. I wanted to remember like the years that it happened and like what it was. So I had everything written down. And then like... A year ago, I deleted the whole entire note because I was like, sexism. (laughs) That's why you wrote it down. (laughs) But now I'm like, well, what was it? What was was it and what did you do this last year? Because I don't remember anymore. This old mind of mine. No, okay. Like a month and a half ago, I had a brief sexual encounter. I think he just sucked on my nipples. And that was that right? I may have been fingered. I don't know. (laughs) Don't remember. And then before that, earlier this year, there was someone that I'm, I don't think, I don't think, I don't, I don't think we did anything actually. I think that we were naked, (laughs) but I don't think anything happened. And then before that, it was Like there was someone in October that we did not have oral sex. It was just heavy petting. And then before that was last March. And that was when I had penetrative sex. So that was literally over a year ago that I've had like the full, the full course meal. There's been little things here and there, but like, I don't really do I don't know. I've got to, I just don't, I don't want to with a lot of people. Like there'll be people that are like really want to, and they'll be like ready to. And I'll be like, well, you can suck a nipple. You can do that if you want. (laughs) I'm like nothing else. Like I want to have sex, but I want to have love sex. It's very specific. Okay. I want to be absolutely fucking obsessed with you. And it's just, it's not happening for any of you bitches. I'm sorry. You can suck a nipple if you want. (laughs) Like you sit here while I use the vibrator and this will be fun for you because you can watch and I just can masturbate. That's actually, I'm sure that I, I know that that's what I did in October. (laughs) I don't know. (laughs) <laughs> but also like as I'm sitting here speaking I feel like I'm making it seem like I'm not happy with my current sex life which I am I don't want to be having sex with people that I'm not deeply involved with that's the truth we stand by that and I feel like not having sex with people that I'm not romantically involved in has actually been a very positive experience for me my feelings are like I just feel more in alignment with myself, with my emotions, with what I want for myself. Um, sex, particularly penetrative sex, changes a lot for me. And 
particularly, particularly penetrative sex, which is why I don't have penetrative sex anymore because I, it changes things for me. It does. I feel way more like emotionally invested. I become way more like, I just need a lot of trust for that. I think because it, it just does, it is a higher investment to me. It means more to me. And, um, sex in general does, but there's lines, there's lines and boundaries. And I just feel like I've I've had a nice time not pushing any of those boundaries. However, I would love to have a non self-inflicted orgasm, but also we have to be in love. (laughs) There's a lot of criteria, but I just think that it'll lead, it'll lead to the most satisfying results in my opinion. When I find the right person for me and we can have that trust and we can establish that I'm going to have so much sex. It's, it's going to be unbelievable. And I really hope he has a small penis because otherwise that sentence is going to be difficult to fulfill. I think about that all the time, like all the time. These, these fables and fallacies of people that date men with big dicks and they're like, yeah, we have sex every day. No, you fucking do not. (laughs) No, you fucking do not. Because I'd be in the hospital, babes. <laughs> I'd be on a fucking gurney. No, absolutely not. If you have a small dick, we can, get, we can have sex every day. And I will enjoy myself, okay? I have no issues with small penises. None whatsoever. In fact, I only have nice things to say. Only nice things to say. Yeah, yeah. Fables and fallacies. All of these people who are like, big dick supremacy. Wrong. Wrong and liars. <laughs> I want a small to average at most, okay? Average at absolute most. Because I would like to have a lot of sex. I do feel like I have a high sex drive. I have a high desire for sex. Not if I'm injured though. Additionally, and another another thought, and then I'm going to end this episode because I don't know what I'm talking about anymore. We're just besting it up. We're doing some girl talk right now. another thought that I had recently more recently when I was hooking up with someone I don't know who it was that I had this thought with but I was laying in bed with someone and we were naked and we were talking and I was like I don't know like running my my hand on their arm and I was just thinking to myself like wow women's skin is so much softer than this (laughs) Like, why, why don't you guys use enough lotion? That's a question that I have for most men. Because I just feel like you don't realize how soft and supple and beautiful and gorgeous women are until you have to come up close to a man. And you're like, why do you feel like a lizard? <laughs> why? why does your skin feel like this? What's going on here? And I feel like every time that I am naked with a man, they're always like, your, your skin is so soft. And I'm like, yeah, I use lotion. <laughs> I'm like, but it's I, I, in that moment, I did feel like, oh my God, women are so perfect. Women are perfect and beautiful and gorgeous. And men feel like lizards. No, I'm, I'm sure there's soft men out there somewhere. Soft men, soft men, soft men triple entendre (laughs) soft men soft men soft men (laughs) i'm on to something we're describing a type right now i love you guys so much be sure to check the spotify poll and question if you'd like to participate in whatever the question of the week is be sure to rate the show on streaming services subscribe on youtube if you haven't already love you so much see you next week